Good morning. Welcome, Welcome to, to church. church. Welcome, Welcome to, to Jerome, Jerome church. church. Good morning. Welcome to church. Good morning, brothers and sisters. My name is Bruce Dickerson, and I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome United Methodist Church. We're so happy to have you joining us this morning. We look forward to spending the day in worship with you in song and in the Word of God. So may this service be a blessing to you. Today we'll be continuing our series, First Things First. Last week we learned a little bit about what it meant to be a witness. This week we're going to learn about what it means to be a disciple. So please continue to join in worship with us as we join together in song. Brothers and sisters, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh God, he's so
Our church is built on the foundation to love God and to love people. This song is a reminder to be the light in the world, bring more positivity into our place. It's a song called More Heart and Less Attack. My name is Meredith Braniger, and I am the Director of Family Ministry here at Jerome. Disciple, maybe it is a word you have heard before, or maybe it sounds new and a little strange to your ears. Maybe you have a picture in your mind of what a disciple looks like, says, or does. Did you know that the very first disciples were fishermen? Today, as we hear what it means to be a disciple, you get to go fishing. Now, you might be thinking that you don't have any fish at your house, and that brings us to today's challenge. Today, make a fish out of whatever you have. Maybe you want to make it out of paper, blocks, a rock, aluminum foil, or a plastic bottle. The possibilities are endless. You could make one fish or lots of fish, even add a fishing pole or a boat. How you create your fish and your fishing gear is totally up to you. Be creative and have fun. 
As always, we love to see your creations. You can post a picture of your fish on our Jerome Church or Jerome Kids Facebook groups. Now, ready, set, go fish. Good morning again, brothers and sisters. Let us hear this morning's gospel lessons. The first is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The second gospel lesson is also from the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him to question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we continue on in our series this week, First Things First, we're going to hone in on what it means to be a disciple. Now, we all would claim to be disciples, followers of Jesus, Christian disciples, if you will. But if I asked you to describe what that is, uh, we'd have a vast amount of uh, definitions of doing what Christ tells me to do. And that's a pretty broad statement. Uh, following God, the triune God, and all the ways they lead me. Well, that's a large statement also. So I want to try to help us to start to gain the same DNA, the same definitions, if you will. And so I have a definition that I found of disciple that I love. And it actually, I wish I could take credit for it, was in a book called A Disciple's Path by James A. Harnish. This is his definition. A disciple is a follower of Jesus who is centering their life on loving God and loving neighbor. A follower of Jesus who is centering their life on loving God and loving neighbor. Now, there's several things I love about this definition. It, it, it tells us exactly what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to love God and we're supposed to love neighbor. And we'll actually look at those a little bit closer in the next couple weeks. But this idea that we are centering our lives that we have chosen to follow Christ and are centering our lives on loving God and loving neighbors. It doesn't mean that we have it all figured out yet. It doesn't mean that we don't have stuff. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever had a pastor admit this to you, but um, I'm a pastor who has baggage. I don't have it all figured out yet. Uh, just because I've been to seminary doesn't mean I have every single question. Just because I was ordained in the United Methodist Church and put on that stole doesn't mean that I have it all figured out. You see, I'm a disciple also. Yes, I'm a disciple who's been set aside, ordained for a, a certain purpose within the church, but I don't have it all figured out. You see, I still have stuff in my life. I still have sin. You see, each of us is uniquely broken. We all have a brokenness in our lives, something that separates us from God. That's really the basic definition of sin. It's sin is those things that separate us from God. It could be addiction. It could be anger. It could be broken relationships. There's a whole wide definition of things that can become sin that brokenness. Yet at some point, you and I have decided to accept Christ into our hearts, into our life, to accept the work of the Holy Spirit. Whether it was a conscious decision that you made, 
one that you traveled along with in a journey and discovered, if it happened at your moment of baptism where you died to your old sinful nature and rose up again wearing the cloak of Christ, wearing the adoptive name of Christian, at some point you allowed Christ to enter your life. And at that point, that's when we became a disciple, a follower of Jesus who is trying to center their life on loving God and loving neighbor. I love that definition of centering. Now the question then becomes, why do we become a disciple? Why did we make that conscious decision? And I have some good news and I had some bad news. I'll start with the bad news. There are many of us out there who at one point or another, and many of us who may still believe this, but we believe we became a disciple of Jesus so that we'd become better people so we could earn salvation, that we could earn our way into heaven. And brothers and sisters, that's not the case. You see, the case is a little more complicated than that. You see, a very long time ago, the Bible puts it this way, in the beginning, God created. You see, God didn't need to create. God didn't have to create. God wanted to create. God was completely perfect before creation and is completely perfect now and is completely perfect in the future. God did not need to create. So why did God create? God created, I believe, out of love, out of a sense of relationship. And God created each one of us with a little spark, with the breath of God, the ruach, the exhale of God, and placed within each and every one of us an image of God. Yet at some point during our history, whether uh, you are a biblical literalist and believe that it was in the Garden of Eden, that Adam and Eve broke that relationship with God through the eating of the fruit, or whether you believe that in some way we wronged God, that is the case. You see, we fell away from our image of God. We took a clear lens that once was able to see God and we dirtied it with sin and brokenness. But the good news is ever since then, God has been trying to reclaim us. Through covenant after covenant, God tried to reclaim the relationship. You see, while we can break that relationship with God, we are unable to make it whole. It takes God's action to do that, and God chose to do that through the life, death, and resurrection of his Son, Jesus Christ. God built a bridge between us again that allows us to once again build a relationship with the triune God. We broke the relationship but it was only God who can fix it. Therefore, if you are a disciple who is doing nice things for others because you are trying to earn your way into heaven, that's not it. You see, the victory had already been won. Through Christ's life, death, and resurrection, the penalty of sin, which is death, has been broken. That's why Christ rose on the third day to show that he overcame even death. And he did it for you, and he did it for me, and he did it for everyone. And see, if you make the decision to become a disciple from that point, your motives become very, very different. You see, you're no longer are trying to earn your way into heaven. You are now a disciple who is working to love God and love neighbor because of everything that God has done for you. 
Salvation isn't earned. It's a free gift from God, shown through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's through there, our faith within God's grace in this action, that we are made whole. See, as a disciple, that's my starting point, not the place of the brokenness, not the place of the hurt, not the place of the sin, trying to cover that up to show that I'm worthy. Because the fact of the matter is, I'm not worthy. That's what makes it God's grace. That's the good news of the gospel. And our discipleship changes suddenly after we work in that place. Discipleship becomes a different thing. Trying to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength is no longer a chore that I'm trying to do, trying to accomplish, to earn salvation. My discipleship to love God and love neighbor becomes works of joy for all that God has done, all that God is doing, and all that God's coming promises of hope. That's why we become disciples. Brothers and sisters, this thing called discipleship sometimes can be a little difficult. It can be a little hard. But once again, realize why we became disciples. Remember that it's our Christian story and heritage found in the Bible. That story of brokenness, reclamation, to return us to how we were meant to be at creation. That makes us disciples. Once again, I want to remind you what the definition of a disciple is. A disciple is a follower of Jesus who is centering their life on loving God and loving neighbor. That's what our mission is. Our mission is to not only be a disciple, but to go out and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them all that Christ taught us. And we do this by loving God and loving neighbor. Brothers and sisters, I want you to have a blessed week. And I want you also to remember that God loves you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah.
Good morning, church. My name is Sarah Merriweather, and I am the Director of Connections here at Jerome. In Matthew 28, in the scripture known as the Great Commission, Jesus tells us, his disciples, to go and make disciples of all nations. These aren't just some nice words. These are the marching orders for the life of a disciple. And as Pastor Bruce shared with us today, the definition of a disciple is someone who centers their life on loving God and loving neighbor. At Jerome Church, there are many opportunities for you to live into Jesus' calling on your life to be a disciple and to make new disciples by loving God and loving neighbor. Each Friday, there's an opportunity called Soup for the Soul where you can provide food or even go serve a meal to our hungry neighbors in downtown Columbus. And coming up on July 21st, we will continue our monthly volunteering at the Common Ground Free Store in Delaware, where we serve a meal and volunteer in the free store together each month. You can sign up for either of these opportunities through links in today's video description. There are also opportunities for you to love others by connecting through a small group or becoming a part of our care team. I wanna invite you to connect with our staff today so that we can help you find your best next steps in discipleship. You can do this by completing a digital connect card or by texting the word connect to 614-587-7871. And as you do that, let us know how we can pray for you and how we might help you along your journey to loving God and loving people more and more every day. As always, I encourage you to stay connected with Jerome Church Online this week through our Facebook groups, weekly e-news, social media, and by sharing this online worship in your network. As we continue to respond to God's word and to live out this great commission, we have the opportunity to fuel the missions and ministries that allow the people of Jerome Church to continue to love God and love people. Your generous gifts keep the life-giving missions and ministries of Jerome Church going and growing each week. And you can be a part of this work by giving financially today. You can give right now by texting the word GIVE to 614-541-3301. You can also give electronically through ACH or bill pay or mail a check to Jerome Church at the address below. As we close in worship today, join me in worship as our traditional musicians lead us in a closing hymn.
men, we each have a story. We can each be a disciple from wherever we are, loving God and loving others. I encourage you this week to look for new ways that you can love God and love others. If you have questions or want to get involved with some of the ways we are loving others at Jerome Church, you can indicate those when you complete your digital connect card today. And if you haven't yet, please share your fish with us by posting a picture on one of our Facebook groups. Have a great week, everyone. Sweet singer.